there's so much information available on the internet that sometimes it can be hard for people to interpret everything that they get. I'm a firm believer in spending all the time that's necessary in order for our patients and their families to fully understand what's going on to make a good decision. Hi, I'm Max Brantley with the Arkansas Times on Thursday, October the 5th. For once, let's start with some good news. Good news for Arkansas government. The Arkansas Supreme Court today decided in a 5-2 vote that indeed Mike Wilson, a Jacksonville lawyer and former state representative, was correct. A legislative scheme to try to find a way around earlier Supreme Court rulings and parcel out state money to local projects favored by individual legislators is unconstitutional. The legislature can't spend money without specifically saying what it's going to be for. It can't just send out money to planning and development districts and then have the legislators call up those districts and tell them how to spend the money. This program was always abused. It was spending money for lo strictly local projects, which is unconstitutional in itself. It went for things like fireworks shows and warm-ups for football teams. Also, we've learned that some legislators became felonious. They've been charged with taking kickbacks from money they got to improper sources, including a little Bible college in Northwest Arkansas, of all things. Rhonda Wood and Sean Womack, both Republican in their leanings, and Womack, a former legislator, would have allowed this <coughs> run on the state treasury to continue. The case goes back to Chris Piazza, who'd ruled in the state's favor originally. There may be some money yet to be sent back to the state treasury by the Central Arkansas Planning and Development District, which was the agency that Mike Wilson specifically sued over its spending. A lot more questions, a lot of federal investigations still underway on that money, but this was a vote for good government by at least five members of the state Supreme Court. Well, the Arkansas Parole Board voted today 6-0 to zero against granting clemency to Jack Green, who's facing an execution November 9th for a 1991 slaying of a pastor in Johnson County. They apparently didn't buy his attorney's argument that he is mentally incompetent. Green himself says he's mentally competent, although he gave a very unusual appearance before the parole board yesterday. The governor makes the final decision on this. There's still a court contest of the execution based on his mental capacity. A plea bargain was entered today in federal court by Joseph Beckman, a former district judge in Wynn, Arkansas. He was accused of <clears throat> trading light sentences for people in his court in return for sexual favors of a sort and, and other actions. He likely will get a sentence of 30 months to more than three years in prison, although that's yet to be determined by a federal judge within the next 90 days or so. Uh, prison cell phone. A, contraband cell phone was used, uh, Channel 4, Fox 16 reports, to record a terrible disturbance at the Varner unit last week. Guards were assaulted and strong measures were used to quell the disturbance. A prison cell phone? How did that happen? The prisoner who provided the TV station said a guard provided it to him. This kind of trade goes on in contraband all the time. Somebody needs to get on top of the situation at the prison, it would seem. Well, Tom Cotton was on uh, <clears throat> the national stage today at a Washington Post seminar. He rattled sabers again at Iran. He thinks there are military options for dealing with that country. He got some pushback, but there's no pushing back Tom Cotton. He's never met a military conflict he doesn't like and apparently will continue on that path. This morning, the U.S. House of Representatives voted with only uh, Democrats and about 16 Republicans in opposition for a tax and budget plan that will mean, if it's passed in this final form, a whopping tax cut, 80% of the benefits to the wealthy, and huge cuts in Medicare, Medicaid, and other important programs for middle-income and lower-income people. This vote today was, first of all, to set up the parliamentary procedure where the Senate can't be filibustered on budget bills. The details of this are yet to be worked out, but uh, progressive advocacy groups say this is bad for working people. Well, of course, it, of course it is. That's the idea. Well, <clears throat> people say, Republicans say, particularly, and the NRA says, it's too early to be talking about guns and gun control issues. We should mourn first and talk about guns sometime later following the mass slaughter in Las Vegas. But people insist on talking about it. The New York Times today paired up the biggest recipients of NRA money with some of the fairly empty quotes that these same people have said about gun violence since the slaughter in Las Vegas. Number one in the U.S. House, French Hill, more than a million dollars in his career from the NRA. Tom Cotton didn't quite make the top ten in the Senate, but he's gotten more than two million dollars. You won't hear them taking any positions opposite the NRA, of course. There are developments on this front, though. Several Republicans have said they're willing to at least talk about 
some gun control measures, at least specifically one that might do something to outlaw so-called bump fire stocks. This is an accessory, fairly inexpensive, by which you can convert a semi-automatic weapon to fully automatic fire. That's apparently what was used by Stephen Paddock in Las Vegas to kill 58 people and wound hundreds more from a sniper's perch in a casino hotel in Las Vegas. Well, here's a surprise late this afternoon. The NRA says, well, maybe we ought to look at more, quote, regulation, unquote, of bumper fire stocks. Now, that's not the same thing as endorsing legislation that's already been introduced to prohibit these things, but for the NRA to agree to any sort of regulation for anything to do with firearms is at least some signal, I think, that the American people are finally tired of the bullies of the NRA. But hey, doesn't the NRA say guns and bumper stocks don't kill people? Only people kill people, not bumper stocks. Well, anyway, we're going to have a discussion on that. Down in Hempstead County, kind of a local version of the big charter plane flight dispute, uh, Haskell Morris, the county judge, got called down by the quorum court, first of all, for buying a $66,000 SUV to tool around in, and then for taking that SUV to Yellowstone on a personal vacation. He said it was all on the up and up and legal, but after a lot of pushback, decided maybe you ought to send a little reimbursement for the travel costs to the county. He says if the voters vote him out because of this, well, that'll be God, God's will that it be done. I don't think Jesus votes in Hempstead County, but, but the people certainly do, and they may not like his spending. And finally, there was this. Uh, an Arkansas family made history in California. Their lawyer says they won a record judgment for the damages done by bed bugs. They checked into a motel in Rancho Cucamonga and got so beset by bed bugs they had to leave the place. For their trouble, they won a jury verdict this week in California of $546,000. The lawyer will get to uh, keep some of that, of course. In the meanwhile, I'm Max Brantley. Don't let the bed bug bite, but do resist. I'll be back tomorrow.